you wearing? What were you doing at a bar? Weren't you kissing him before? Yeah. Didn't you kiss him before? Like just being in public, having a drink means somehow you're asking for it. I mean, listen to like Harvey Weinstein's lawyer and all the things she's saying about the women that have accused him. Like it's awful. This is why people don't report. Um, once again, this story wasn't public until 2019, and it really had no impact on Max Landis. He just went about his business. Um, he had a string of unproduced scripts and box office failures. In 2011, he sold a script called The Good Time Gang. Um, I guess it's a cross between The Born Identity and Jackass, and it was never produced. Mm. Um, also in 2011, he wrote a script called Mr. Right. It stars Anna Kendrick and Sam Rockwell, and it actually came out in 2015 to very mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. He wrote Chronicle, which is the only one I think people can point to that was like it actually like critics kind of liked it and it made some money, although I never saw it. And it's directed by someone named Josh Trank. And I already mentioned it's the only one that people seem to actually kind of like. He wrote a script for a sequel to Chronicle, but Fox Studios hated it and they (laughs) never did anything with it. Surprise. They also bought his script based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein because that's a story that needs to be told again. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And it became 2015's Victor Frankenstein, which was also a box office dud. I'm just going to keep running through a few things here. In February 2015, he directed an Ariana Grande music video one last time, but then he was accused of plagiarizing the style and themes of the video from another music video called You Are the One by an Australian band called Safia. (laughs) So he can't even, (laughs) dude can't even direct a music video without being a hack. In March 2016, he directed a movie called Me, Him, and Her. Um, And critics hated it. And here's a quote from a Variety review. It says, what Max Landis sexual orientation bending directorial debut lacks in style, it makes up for in (laughs) self-absorption. I'm sure you've probably heard this. There's been a lot of studies that prove that when it comes to hiring men, men are judged by their potential And women are evaluated based on their past performance. Mm -hmm. And Max Landis has benefited from this for years. Like, it's always his potential. It's never what he's actually done. Like, could you imagine, like, a woman getting these kind of chances over and over and over? No, and I'm going to... Or a person person of color? No, no. No, and I'm going to interrupt because um, the, the, a perfect example of this, I'm going to make bring this really lowbrow, but on yeah. Below Deck, they had a reunion, and on this season, which is the season seven that just concluded, the male deckhands were horrible, sexist, misogynistic assholes. And there's three women on the deck room in the interior, and there's one woman named Kate, who's kind of bitchy, for sure, but... When they had this reunion special, and one of the men tried to beat up Kate in a car. Oh, my God. Yeah. And Andy Cohen, who hosts the show, just basically, like, gave the guys all these chances to kind of say, sorry, I didn't mean to do that, and I'm going to try to be better. And Kate was just hassled for every single decision she made as a manager. <laughs> so That's... It perfectly illustrated what you just yeah. said. So, yeah. Yeah. It's incredibly frustrating. Yeah. It's awful. In 2016, Landis was tapped to write and direct a remake of his father's uh, American Werewolf in London. I wonder how he got that job. (laughs) And because 2016 wasn't shitty enough, John Landis, or sorry, Max Landis was hired by Warner Brothers to pen, this is not a joke, a standalone film based on Pepe Le Pew. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Don't make me Seriously? laugh. My allergies are really bad today. That's hilarious. Seriously, I almost did a spit take when I read that. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, who doesn't want to watch a movie about a horny skunk who doesn't take no for an answer? Right, who sexually harasses every woman in his presence. Yeah, and it's written by a serial sexual abuser. Yeah, that sounds awesome. None of those things happened, by the way. Those movies never were made and... I, I don't even see anything about like scripts actually being written. So I 
maybe there's a Pepe Le Pew script out there. Maybe I want to read it. I don't know. I don't want to see it. That's for sure. Netflix paid him $3 million for his script for Bright. $3 million. That's like big money for screenplays, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bright stars Will Smith, and it went on to be critically panned, and a lot of critics named it as one of the worst movies of 2017. In October 2017, Vulture wrote a profile of Max Landis, and it was called I Shit You Not. Who's Afraid of Max Landis? An inside, a look inside the mind of one of Hollywood's most successful and divisive screenwriters. Ooh. Yes. Once again, Bright had come out. It's universally panned. It's got 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, yes, please tell me how successful Max Landis is, Vulture. <laughs> No, they're talking about his potential. Don't you get it? Yeah, exactly. So here's a little thing they wrote in the article because I read it and I was like, I just wanted to throw up. He is already he already has an impressively long resume for someone his age. And then they list like all these things that he's done. Like he wrote Chronicle and American Ultra and Victor Frankenstein, Mr. Right. All of those things were massive bombs and critical failures. All of them, except for Chronicle. Right. But still like. The story's like, it's embarrassing. It's like an embarrassing story. And it's linked. We link to it in the show notes Um, because two men, two months later, it's revealed that he's an emotionally was sorry. uh, Yeah. An emotionally abusive asshole with a history of sexual assault. So good job, Vulture. Usually you're a little bit more on it, but not in this case. So let's get into it. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. I need a little caffeine to get through this part. So let's get into it. In December 2017, Mad Magazine editor Allie Gertz tweeted that she couldn't imagine someone more scared in a post-Harvey Weinstein world than a famous director's son. She didn't name Max Landis, but then all these like Hollywood writers started to subtweet it. Jake Wiseman of Comedy Central's Corporate tweeted, quote, definitely watch that big Netflix movie coming out written by that fucking psychopath who's one of the worst people alive. Wow. Yeah, it, there's a few more. As Saturday Night Live contributor uh, Mike, Mike Drucker, mm-hmm. uh, um, he responded saying, Jake, I have exactly, entirely, 100%, no idea whom you're talking about, but I hope he doesn't have a powerful father in Hollywood who's covered up for the fucked up shit he's done. <sighs> I know. It keeps going on. Then, actress, uh, I think her name is pronounced Sobian Thompson. Mm-hmm. Sobihan Thompson. Uh, I actually follow her on Twitter. She's really funny. She tweeted, I don't know who you mean, but if that's true, I bet I have several friends who have been sexually assaulted by him. Holy shit. I know. Then a few weeks later, Max Landis was accused of sexual assault by a former coworker. Her name is Anna uh, Akana. Netflix had sent out like some promotional tweet for Bright because they're just pretending that this stuff is not out there. And she commented, written by a psychopath who sexually abused and assaults women, right? Cool. Yeah, so things are starting to come out, and this is all right at the end of 2017. So this is when, like, Me Too is starting to take shape, starting to happen. Following her statement, Anna Akana's, other industry figures started to confirm um, Max Landis's reputation. Anti-harassment activist Zoe Quinn posted about Landis, alleging that his abuse of women was an open secret in Hollywood, and that a lot of publications were withholding the story because his dad is so powerful and she was not wrong because then nothing happened like all of that was starting to come out it's the end of 2017 and then nothing happened and then the daily beast published a story almost two years later in 2019 that details the story of eight women accusing max landis of abuse Um, and that includes the story of the young woman in college so we don't we're not going to go back into that story. Right. But that that story was in there as well. So there's quite a few women 
some of their names have been changed to protect their identities. So the first one is Julie. She told the Daily Beast that Landis was emotionally abusive and repeatedly raped her during their two-year personal relationship. She described the spectrum of abuse she experienced or their relationship. She wrote Max Landis would bring up his hand and fake that he was going to hit her and then laugh when she flinched Ugh. on multiple occasions. He'd refer to refer to her as his ex-girlfriend in front of girls at parties, even though they were a couple. You know, that's just like dick move shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, yeah, he's an asshole. He would critique her body in front of people and then privately tell her that she had potential to be so hot if she would just work out Ugh. once again these are like shitty boyfriend things and you could still be a creep you could still be a creep and not do shit that's ill you know this isn't illegal what he's doing he's just a prick so i don't want people to think that i know that sometimes we get criticism where they're like well that's not illegal and it's like you don't have to do things that are illegal to be a creep right he's a creep listen to how he talks to these women it's awful um, he'd graphically describe sex with his ex-girlfriends to her and then rate her abilities compared to them. He, he, it's Ugh. just gross. He's a gross boyfriend. She also said that he told her that seeing her cry was a turn on and he would yell at her until she started crying and then he would rape her while she cried. <gasps> Jesus Christ. I know. He's he's really awful. Um, she also told the Daily Beast that he choked her a few times until she passed out. Um, and then he would do awful things to her that she didn't even want to talk about. She, she said that he continued to violate her boundaries even after their relationship. And she said, if any, this is a quote, if any of this feels like a blurred line scenario, let me assure you that he did hold me down and rape me while I said no over and over. Oh, my God. He's a rapist. Yeah. Three of Landis's ex-girlfriends. Uh, Ani Baker, Danny Mannon, and a woman only identified as Carrie said that Landis had physically and emotionally abused them. And he choking comes up a lot. He chokes these women. It's really, really awful. Oof. Danny Mannon, Manning told the Daily Beast, this is a quote, the emotional abuse took control of me to the point where I got down to 115 pounds at 5'10". Oh, my God. But, yeah, that's so skinny, you guys. It's so it's she she must have looked like a skeleton. It it's yeah. bonkers to me. Um, still not skinny enough. He'd smack food out of my hand in front of his family to stop me from eating. He told me that if I'd work out more, I'd be supermodel pretty, except I was not pretty. And I would be told why in detail, which body parts, facial features. I'd get insulted if the outfit I wore didn't look sexy enough or made my body look bad. Another woman identified as Veronica said that Landis touched her unwantedly in a sexual manner repeatedly during an overnight trip to Disneyland. She said that they had been friends for about two years and that she had recently gone through a breakup and he suggested they go to Disneyland and they would stay in a hotel with like two beds. Dude has so much money. Get like get your own room. Right. Get your own room. Like we'll share a room and get two beds. Don't no, whatever. As soon as they got there, he pinned her down and started groping her. When he saw that he had scared her, she said that he laughed and said, that made you uncomfortable, didn't it? And that's, she said, that's when it began to sink in for me that I was physically trapped there with him for the next 24 hours. She said, well, I wrote, you think she'd be safe in the happiest place on earth? Right. Um, she said that she wasn't like they went into the park. And, quote, he tried to put his hand down my pants and up my shirt while we were waiting in line for rides surrounded by children and families. Eventually, he just started shouting at her all like throughout the park, like, I want to fuck. Oh, God. Yeah. And so she was like, I have to get him out of here. So they left. And when they went back to the hotel room, they had sex, which was rough and violent. And and she also said, quote, but over relatively quickly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Like, I don't know if she's like trying to like, you're burnt, you're burnt, Max Landis. It was over relatively quickly. Um, she texted her friend, Anna Akana, the woman who told her story about sexual assault. Mm -hmm. She texted her from the hotel and said that she didn't want to do this. And I mean, she, can, she told her that he raped her and she told another mutual friend about it as well. 
nothing came of that. Ex-girlfriend Ani Baker said, 